and welcome back to Crafters Grove. Today's project, I wanted to uh, take in these maternity pants that I thought weren't fitting, but as you can see, they actually fit quite snugly on the hips, but they are quite wide at the bottom, as you can see here. So I do want to turn them from a wide flare to more of a straight leg or small flare pant. So that's what this tutorial is going to walk you through. First step is turning the pants inside out. To come up with a plan of the sewing, I do like to look at a similar garment where the flare is what I want to achieve. So here's a, a straight leg or small flared pant. And what you can see is the stitching is almost straight from the knee down. So that's what we want to achieve in our pants. So what you can do is um, either stand or sit on a chair and pin to where you want the pants to be. So I'm starting at the knees as one guide point and pinning with a little bit of room because we do want a little bit of room to grow plus you want a little bit of room when you sit down so the pants aren't too tight and squeezing you as you sit. And then after you create that space, you're going to go down to the ankles to pin another guiding spot. So this isn't the full pin, this is only a guide to then do the pinning when the pants are laid out. So two to three pins might be sufficient if you feel like you need more, that's fine too. Pin as much as you feel you need to help guide you in the overall pinning line. So once you have all your guide pins in place, you want to lay out your pants on a flat surface that's easy to work on. Now we want to create a seam that runs along the original seam and then straight down from the knee. So we're going to have to reposition those guide pins to ensure that the two layers of fabric meet nicely and with no space, to ensure the pins are flat and to ensure you are creating a straight line. I find my method for creating a straight line is continuing to adjust the pins until that visual straight line is there. But another way of creating it, you can use a measuring tape or a ruler to help ensure your line is straight. Now before you pin all the way to the bottom of your pants, you actually want to remove the stitching of the pant cuff to remove that hem so that you can continue to sew straight to the bottom of the material. And then after you've sewed the edges of the pants, you can re-sew that cuff. This is also a great time to make any adjustments to the length that you may need to do anyways for your pants. The reason why it's important to remove that stitching for the hem is because if you just continue that sewing of the seams all the way down to the bottom of the pants without removing and replacing the cuff hem, is it will be very obvious that you've made an alteration to your pants. It may feel like an annoying, unnecessary step, but trust me, your finished product is going to look much better and actually finished if you include this important step. So once you've finished pinning one side of your pant leg, you're going to move on to the other side of the same pant leg. One thing that you can consider doing is using a ruler or a measuring tape to ensure that on each pant leg, the left and the right side are equal in terms of how much you're moving inwards from the side seam. Once you've pinned one pant leg, you want to lay the second pant leg over top of the first one to really ensure that you're pinning the exact same width on both. So what I have here is the one that I'm going to be working on or finish working on on top and you can see it's quite a bit narrow. So we have to adjust those pins to ensure that it's the same width. So I've just adjusted the bottom two pins and then I'm going to continue that straight line up towards the knee. So once you've placed all of your pins, you want to lay out the pant legs to get a good sight line, see how they're doing, but certainly you want to try them on. With those cuffs down, you do want to stand on tippy toes to get a real sense of the shape, and you certainly want to do a sit test to make sure they're fitting okay before you start sewing. So as I mentioned before, to create a seamless transition between the old seam and the new seam, you want to start your stitch just to the outside of the old seam and then continue from there. Making sure to do a little bit of a reverse stitch before you start sewing all the way down the pant leg. And then sewing slowly and removing the pins as you go will help 
keep that guide for you to ensure that not only are you going in the right direction, but you're also ensuring that straight line as you go as well. After you've sewn along all of your pin lines, you want to hem your pants again. So what you can start off by doing is pinning the pants um, and then once they're pinned to the right length, you're going to iron and repin them. This will just help ensure a straight and nicely finished off pant cuff. Once you've finished ironing and pinning the pant cuffs, you can start sewing. I found that sewing inside out just really helped me keep a straight line and a consistent line along the bottom of the pants by just running along the stitching of the original reinforced edge. At this point, you may have noticed that I have not cut out the excess material out of the pants. I like to do this because it is more environmental. It just allows you to undo these new seams and alter the pants as many times as you can before they start to show their wear. So it really allows for more versatility of a pair of pants over time. Okay, it's time to cut your loose threads and you're done. Let's do one more final fitting to ensure that we're happy with the final fit. Looking at the side-by-side -side comparison of before and after, you can see how much reducing that flare really slimmed down these pants. And who doesn't love a slimming garment? I hope you enjoyed watching this video and found the tutorial helpful. If you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button below and subscribe to our channel. And be sure to leave us a comment down below. Time for our Crafters Grove tip of the week. Ting! Okay, so I'm not the greatest seamstress and I don't own my own sewing machine. So I'm definitely not an expert on sewing machines. So what did I learn for the first time when doing this project? Well, that the bobbin has to go a specific way in the sewing machine. Oh my God. If it hasn't been placed in the correct direction, you might find this stitching at the back of your project. The more you know. Bye!